Saga Cigars, makers of the Saga Golden Age. The Golden Age is a cigar that takes you back to the classic days of cigar smoking. Through the six generations of experience by the Reyes family, the Saga Golden Age delivers a timeless blend that uses the nobility of the tobacco to bring you the perfect balance of power and flavor. It narrates better than words the history of a family's tradition in tobacco, delivering a cigar much like the ones they used to smoke in the times of Hemingway. Saga Golden Age is a full-bodied, full-flavored Dominican Puro. With tobaccos from one farm, the blend features a Corojo 2006 wrapper and filler from original Cuban seeds grown in the Dominican Republic. Available in four sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Golden Age is sure to please and take you back on a journey to yesteryear. M. Bombay cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars where the cigar is a way of life. If you created the Aging Room Small Batch Cigar Line, the highest rated boutique cigar brand of our times, what would you do next? Well, if you're Raphael Nodel from Boutique Blend Cigars, you would combine your three most important passions of your life, Cuba, music, and cigars, and create a new classic, La Boheme Cigars. La Boheme is Raphael's take on the golden age of Cuban cigars. La Boheme is a sophisticated blend of extra age and hard-to-find tobaccos from the Dominican Republic. A medium-bodied cigar, rich in flavors reminiscent of the island he left 35 years ago in a small boat with his family. Why wait for the embargo to be lifted? Smoke La Boheme today. Blending is in our DNA. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our Stogies of the Week segment. I'm always excited to talk about the cigars that I've been smoking. Will, I know you've got several on your list, but before we get to that, you wanted to cover some events that are being run by our sponsors. Yeah, actually, it's a very – our sponsors are really doing a um, a good amount of stuff, you know, over, you know, over um, this time of the year. So um, as far as what we have going, there is a um, – we have, first of all, Roberto Duran from Duran Cigars um, is actually going to be making a few appearances in the Midwest. Um, on November 4th, he'll be at Blend Cigar Bar in Indianapolis. On November 5th, he'll be at Bluegrass Cigar Suite in Cincinnati. And at um, November 6th, he'll be at Jungle Jim's Eastgate Humidor in Eastgate, Ohio, which is, um, you know, so again, it's, it's in the Cincinnati area. If you haven't met Roberto, he's a I've met him and he's a very, very uh, great guy to meet at an event. He's very personable. He's got a lot of knowledge. Boutique Blends is sponsoring um, the Food Channel New York Wine and Food uh, Festival. Um, and um, that will be held on October 17th. And uh, for details, you can go to www.nycwff. Dot org. Phil Zengi is making his way through California, um, and tomorrow he'll be at Cigar Monkey in Merced. And uh, also for our folks who are smoking M Bombay, we have the uh, the cigar. They have the cigar fishing out of giveaway still going on right now. So um, if you go to your local M Bombay de- retailer, uh, buy three M Bombay cigars, they'll give you a raffle ticket, and they're raffling off a trip to either the Big Smoke in las vegas or new york i failed will i only bought one. Ah, oh, <laughs> and you're smoking it right now and i am this is the uh m bombay casera is that the, is that the casera you said right yep. casera this is the a toro size with a shaggy yep. foot yep i tell you what i have never smoked a shaggy foot as awesome as this one like usually the shaggy foot you know kind of it makes a lot of ash and smoke, and it's kind of obnoxious. This really didn't do that. Also, you know, I mean, the flavors are usually just okay until you get to the wrapper portion. This Shaggy Foot was awesome, dude. It was awesome. And this cigar is awesome. Th- this is a box-worthy, Will, for sure. Well, I, I had that as a box-worthy, too. I thought it was exactly what you said. I was amazed at the flavor I got off the Shag without the harshness, without the mess. Um so I agree with you. I'm actually smoking a shag foot. Um, it's the Tatawahe Jackal 
Um, yeah. Which has a smaller shag. It's more of an unfinished foot than actually right. a shag. Um, and I, this is an exclusive to, oops, to Casa de Monte Cristo. Nice. So, yep. So it's kind of a shag theme we have going here. This is a great medium bodied smoke, too. I just want to mention that for our listeners. Like, it's not overpowering at all. It is a solid medium body with great flavor. Yeah, they're using that Ecuadorian Del Florado wrapper, um, which if folks are familiar with Chinook Cellars makes use of it. Um, it's it's a really good wrapper, I find, with a lot of flavor to it. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of wrappers with a lot of flavor, I did some smoking of the Christoph Cameroon. And I tried this in the Toro and the Gordo size. This is a, a really good cigar in these uh, sizes. Solid fivers on each of these. And... You know, I mean, that's I mean that's saying something about the cigar. I mean, because these are pretty big cigars. And to keep five of each in your humidor, I think, is really saying something. I do want to um, me mention a couple things. One, the Robusto is the bell of the ball in this line. The Robusto, for whatever reason, just cranks up that flavor notch. You really get that sweetness from the wrapper in the Robusto size, I think more so than the Toro and the Gordo. Um, these sticks will, they want to be humidified. I, my recommendation, knowing the Cameroon wrapper, is 70-70. 70% humidity, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep them at steady at that humidity and temperature for a while before you smoke them. Like whatever humidors they're in or whatever process they've gone through, these things have to rest. That Cameroon wrapper is so thin that my recommendation is to keep it uh, well. Seventy is a little higher than I than I keep it. You could probably go seventy one or seventy two, will, and it would be uh, okay, I think, because this wrapper is so so thin and delicate, but it has fantastic flavor that it's worth spending the extra time. Make sure that these are perfectly humidified, and if they are, you're going to have an awesome smoking experience. Yeah, I'm a little Yeah, I never thought about that with Cameroon until you're saying that. Because um, normally I am someone who goes under 70 with my cigars. Yeah, because you probably. Uh, I probably smoke a little slower than I should. So if my cigars are a little more humidified than they should be, they tend to go out easier. And then I'm relighting it. And I don't want to taint the review process by having to keep doing that. Um, so I, I think. Uh, you know, these certainly would be an exception for me, like you said, Will, to keep it a higher humidity. Over to you, Will. Um, let us talk about a cigar. I don't think we we talked about this brand enough, um, and it's just just one of those things that we just haven't gotten to them. But um, Gurkha released a new cigar at the trade show called the Gurkha Heritage, um, and it's an interesting blend. It's got an Ecuadorian Rosado wrapper, Nicaraguan binder. And it's got a mix of Demo Dominican Piloto Cabano, Nicaraguan, and a little of that Pennsylvania, which I think is, I see a lot of these blenders add that for strength there. And they're actually making this cigar out of Nicaragua. Now, the interesting thing about this cigar, it's, it's covered with a cedar sleeve. And it's kind of different from a packaging standpoint from Gurkha, which is very known for their ornate packaging. Um, this is more in a cedar box. I don't want to say it's a plain cedar box. It's got... It's got some Gurkha design up, but it's a it's an unfit it's an unvarnished cedar cedar box, which I think adds a lot of charm. And it's got a parchment paper type wrapper on it. The wrapper is actually pretty nice, um, so it doesn't look by any means like a inexpensive cigar. Um, and I was actually pretty impressed with this cigar. First of all, it's a nine dollar price point for a Toro. Um, it was it delivered a lot of notes. Of, obviously, I got the cedar off that cigar. I got a lot of nice natural tobacco notes, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of a of a cherry note in there. Um, it was a nice, it was a nice cigar and, you know, it was, in my book, it was worth a fiver. Um, it's definitely a cigar worth checking out. I know Gurkha's had a little bit of a polarizing, um, on the market at times, but this one, I, I was, like I said, it was, it was a pleasant cigar, very enjoyable. Um, not going to knock you out. It's medium strength, medium to full bodied. So it's one worth checking out. What was your rating on that one, Will? A fiver. Nice. Yeah, like I said, it's a it's a nice it's a it was a nice release. Like I said, a little less uh, ornate, you know, a little less over the top, but but a little bit of very good cigar. Uh, I smoked an Opus X Petit Lancero, and I am very fond of this particular size Opus X. I really like the Petit Lancero size. I actually wish that 
more manufacturers would make the Petit Lancero as they make it uh, from Fuente in this Opus X blend with the Bellicoso uh, torpedo kind of foot on it. I think that's pretty unique uh, for this Petit Lancero. It should really be a Petit, like, Bellicoso Lancero, Petit Lancero torpedo. Like, you don't see that size ever, which I think makes this cigar uh, a little unique uh, in, in terms of its size. I've got to imagine, Will, that it's difficult to make that uh, torpedo kind of shape on it in such a small ring gauge. Oh, yeah. I, w- I would definitely agree with you on that. Now, the you, flavors were, were okay. This one probably has a year's worth of age, and it just felt to me like it needed some more age on it. Um, most people recommend at least a year before you start smoking Opus X to rest in your humidor. Uh, I recommend three. And this one, you could tell, just, just needed some more age on it. I think this is a great size, one of my favorite sizes uh, that I thought in the past didn't require as much age. Some sizes age a little faster, Um thinking that maybe some of the smaller sizes will age faster is not necessarily the right way to think of it. Um, however much, uh, <coughs> excuse me, tobacco they put in it, that tobacco needs to age for a while. So as it stands now, uh, I would put it in a fiver category. I would say as the cigar ages, it's going to creep up in our, our ratings category. But uh, if you see this is worth a fiver, take these, put five away. Um, I don't think it's the best value necessarily in the Opus X line. I mean, these are still pretty expensive. And it's a pretty small cigar, but it's truly unique in, in its size uh, for the most part. I don't know many, of very many people making a Petit Lancero with that torpedo uh, head on it. So uh, really cool cigar. I like these a lot, but they need some age. Yeah, you know, but I think there's, um, I know there's, there's two schools of thought on, you know, get cigars and smoke them. You know, you want to get them and smoke them, and I get that. But I think as far as being a cigar geek and, a, you know, really into cigars, We've talked about it a lot. The the aging, the, the, there's a lot of fun in aging these cigars and seeing how yes. they progress over time, you know. And Opus X, uh, you know, is a great example. The Añejo is, you know, another great example. So I think there's a lot of fun with that um, to do that. But you know, you just got to understand that going in when you're going to make that investment. Super easy. The way I keep my Opus X in my humidor, I try and when I find them at retailers, I try and buy some as I go. Uh, and what I do is when I get them home. I put them in a Ziploc bag and I write the month on them in the year. Month and year right in the Ziploc bag and I just keep on my Ziploc bags and then I know I can go to my humidor. And if you do this over time, and I'm not saying you have to buy boxes. These Rarely do I buy boxes of Opus X. When they come in, cause, because they come in at staggered points during the year and retailers typically sell out, you know, when, when the local shops here get their allotment, I'll go to one shop and I'll buy five of this size, five of that size. And then it might be another eight months before they come back into retail or so I'll go buy, you know, five of that size, five of this size. And if you put them in bags with the month and year, you know, over time, lo and behold, you get to a point where you're like, wow, I can smoke Opus X and it's at least three years old and I can smoke a lot of it now because I've amassed this collection. And it's nice to be able to space that out so you don't have to necessarily spend all that money on a box because some of these boxes are really, some of the boxes have 48 or 50 cigars in them. So yeah. they can get really pricey. Uh, right. But that's my recommendation. And, you know, buy fivers as they come into the retailer, stick them in Ziploc bags, date them, and then <clears throat> once that three-year mark has uh, come along, uh, you'll, you'll, it's worth the wait, in my opinion. It is, and it's worth that extra step of, of putting it in the Ziploc and, and putting that date. Uh, you'll, it's, it's an extra step, and my wife says it's a high-maintenance hobby sometimes. And, and it, it is, it but, but, it's, yeah. but it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Yeah. Back to you, Will. Um, I smoked uh, Roberto, uh, the Roberto Duran Signature Santos Cardenas cigar. That's the coffin cigar. Um, and that's the Salomon um, that they're doing off the Duran Signature blend that was um, actually tweaked by their new master blender from Cuba, uh, Santos Cardenas. Um, he tweaked the blend. He actually individually rolled all 3,000 cigars they produced in this allotment, and wow. they're put in coffins that are signed by him. Um, I didn't get a coffin cigar, but I did get one of the cigars um, from from the show on this, and, and I had an opportunity to smoke it. Um, it it's a all I know is that I don't know how they tweak the blend. It still has that Ecuadorian Criollo wrapper on it, um, and it's a seven and three quarter by fifty seven Salomon. Um, this is a good cigar, and in you know I like the I like the signature line. That's a line I've found too that ages very well over time. 
Um, but this was definitely a different cigar. And I think combining the tweaks in the blend with the shape of the Salomon delivered a really, really good uh, cigar experience. It had a, you know, I know we were just talking in the last segment about simple notes like salty, savory, uh, sweet. Yeah. But, you know, they, but sometimes you want to kind of go a little further and say, all right, what kind of sweetness? Well, the sweetness on this was a little bit of an apricot sweetness. It actually was really, really nice. Um, it had some nice nut flavors. It, uh, it had very much a tobacco taste to this cigar um, through and through. It it, touched, it was very well burning for a Salomon. It was very well made. Um, so I was really impressed. It, it didn't require a lot of maintenance to get through this cigar. Um, so that was pretty, pretty impressive. It was a slow burner, too, mm. which was so for a big cigar. I mean, I smoked this thing over two hours with it. Um, and. Um, you know, I was pretty. I was pretty impressed with it. It's a medium strength, medium bodied cigar. Now, I gave it a box worthy rating, but there's a couple of caveats I want to yeah, put on you that. Can't box really worthy. buy a box of them, right? Well, they come in boxes of five, coffins of five, and it's a twenty five dollar price point. So, you know, and, and Jack Tarano, who was on the show a couple of weeks ago, you know, he said, "Hey, look, it's a special occasion cigar, and it was really designed. It wasn't designed to be an everyday cigar." And, you know, I tell you what, for that cigar, and I tell you what, when you, I saw the, I have some pictures on Cigar Cooper, the packaging of that thing. Um, and it, it's a cigar, it's, I would definitely like to get some more of these if I can get my hands on them, because it's, um, it, like I said, for a really good Salomon, um, it's a really good Salomon. Mm. Um, you know, it's up there with some of the ones we've talked about. So, worth checking out, it's going to be a little harder to track down, they only did 3,000 of these, so, um you know, check your, you know, your retailers. You can go to DuranCigars.com to see where their retailers as well. Excellent. I smoked one from our friend Dave Garofalo. This, oh. is, the, this is the Garofalo. This I bought this Gar- when I was at Two Guys Smoke Shop, thanks to Mr. Jonathan, uh, again, for, for touring me through the shop and uh, helping me spend our hard-earned money, which was all very well spent, I have to say. Uh, I did not dislike any of the cigars that Jonathan recommended. So he did a great job. One of the ones he recommended was the Garofalo Torpedo. Uh, and Jonathan was really, he was like pointing out sizes. Like he wasn't afraid to say, no, Paul, you, you, I'm like, I kind of want to try that blend. And he's like, well, you gotta, you gotta try this size. I mean, and he didn't like, there was no hesitation. And let me tell you, he hit the mark. Uh, I think every single time. So this is the Garofalo uh, Torpedo. I want to say this is made at Perdomo. Is that correct? It is made at Perdomo. Yeah. Uh, this is a great mild smoke. I tell you what, we we talk about flavors and saltiness and you know all the, the different flavors and complexities you get from a cigar. One of the components that really is going to make those things shine through that's so important is burn, draw, and construction. If burn, draw, and construction are good, you're really going to get to experience everything that cigar intended to make you experience on your palate. And that was one of the things that I remember fondly about this cigar was I was kind of skeptical because it's a torpedo. And sometimes you can have burn, draw, and construction issues with a torpedo. The burn, draw, and construction was impeccable on this cigar, which I think really contributed to me experiencing those flavors. It had a nice creamy component to it, had some nice sweetness to it. It coated your palate very well uh, and was a great mild smoke. And I think that with mild smokes especially, which you have to pay attention a little more, I think, to get some of the flavors because they are more mild, that burn drawn construction is extremely important. Very. And, and this, this hit the spot, man. I would smoke these all the time in the morning uh, with coffee for sure. Uh, so I called this one a box split. Yeah, I, I smoked the Robusto. I gave it a fiver, so I'm kind of you know. And it was I thought it was a really good cigar um, too. Got to give credit to the guys at two guys, you know, Mr. Jonathan, mm. you know, guys like Stogie Santa, the Fat Cigar Club. I mean, these are when you guys when you when someone can go in there and point out not just the cigar, but but the size, the size. and hit and hit the mark and and hit your profile. I think that's a I think that's a big big plus there. Um, and you know, I'll say another thing: these cigars that are up at two guys. They're not house cigars. No. They're, real, they're no, good they're, quality yeah, cigars that, that, that I'm seeing up there that I've had. So, you know, I know there's some limited distribution to some of their – they have retailers that do carry that outside of two guys. But we know you can get them up at two guys for yeah, sure. Yeah, and you can order them from their website too. Yep, yep, absolutely. So if you're looking for something different uh, <clears throat> to work into your mild smoking rotation, that's definitely one I, I, would, I would put in there. And you guys know I'm, I'm picky about that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Back to you, Will. I'm going to go on the opposite end of things. Mm. I'm going to smoke a, a, a powerhouse. Um, 
And I smoked, and this is a cigar that didn't really get a lot of fanfare, and it's been out for about a year. It's a line extension to the Illusioni Ultra line. It's the OP number seven. Um, so a lot of folks are familiar with the MK Ultra, right? That's their little Corona that they, it's more of a limited. Yeah. Uh, I, Stogie Sand is a big fan of those and recommended it, them. He and loves they that are, yeah, they are good. Yeah. And then they did three box presses, which are more regular production. Mm-hmm. Well, last year they added a Parejo. Um, and it's a, it's a big cigar. It's six and a half by 58. Um, and it's in that same blend. It's the OP number seven there. Um, and this cigar, I was real surprised, um, with this cigar. It, it, it had a lot of flavor. It had notes of black pepper, natural tobacco, a nice black licorice flavor that was in there. Um, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a strong cigar. It starts out like on the upper end of medium full and then by the second half you're feeling the power of that because I think it's a very powerful blend that Dion's done with that. The body is about medium to full so towards the second half you're going to get a little more of that strength, but it's not um it's not terrible, you know, in terms of there's still enough flavor in that cigar. Um I found it was another slow burner with this one. Um, it took me over two. This was another cigar that took me over two hours. I have a lot of long smokes this week. Nice. This took me a lot of it, but no adverse effects from the slow burn other than it just made for a longer smoke. Um, I had it as a box split. It, it's a um, 1250 cigar, so it's not a cheap cigar. But I'll tell you what. Um, I, I've, I've been mixed on the MK Ultra. I've had mixed reactions to it. I know Stogie Santa loves it. Right now, this one is, is my favorite size of this line because um, I've had it consistently right now, and I've enjoyed it. It's a, you know, so I have it as a box split in my book. Um, so the, uh, we were talking in the blending seminar last night. Sorry, I was trying to collect my thoughts. No, that's uh, okay. I don't remember which, which way this person described it, um, but Jose had a, a great answer. He said, I, I think he said that I, I don't really prefer box press cigars. I like them better when they're Parejos. And Jose said, well, you'd have to smoke that same blend in a Parejo and in a box press to be able to say whether, you know, you like a box press or Parejo better. And I thought about that because sometimes I do prefer the box press. And I'm like, well, I, I have smoked a lot of them in both Parejo and a box press from different manufacturers. And sometimes I prefer the Parejo. And oftentimes the box press does really well. And I think for all the reasons that Rocky Patel was talking about on the show, I thought he had the best answer to that question about box pressing. And he certainly released a lot of box press cigars. Um, and, you know, Jose brought up Padron 64 uh, anniversary as a great box press cigar. And Recently, I smoked that EPC La Historia, right? That was yep. Parejo when I first smoked it in the box press. No, they're, they're, they're all are box they, press. Are they all box press in there? They're one? all box press, yeah. Okay, so they all do have a slight box press. But I preferred the box press torpedo a little better. So sometimes I think um, I, I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the Garofalo cigar. I think the burn-drawn construction, if it's spot on, really helps bring out those flavors. And I think because they slightly underfill those box presses and then press them that you get a really good burn draw and construction on them. You get a, a different kind of surface area and you know, all those things that Rocky was talking about. Um, so sometimes you can prefer the box, but other times the blend may just lend itself to a different shape. And it all kind of circles back around to my point, Will, about the size in a particular blend makes a difference. And it took me a long time to truly understand just how much size can impact how you like a particular cigar in a particular blend. And that really, I think, is a huge challenge for us while reviewing cigars because when we do, we have to smoke a lot more of the sizes. And actually, recently, I've been smoking a lot more of the different sizes in a blend before I review them um, because oftentimes, if I find the size I like, it's going to review much higher than some of the other sizes in the blend. So that makes a huge, size matters. It, it, it absolutely does. And the shape, um, how it's rolled, all of those things certainly matter. So to give everything a fair review and say things like, I like this better than that, you have to have smoked it all. Um, and so I, I think some people just kind of speak off the cuff. Certainly I would never want to do that here on the Stoic Geek. So you're going to see us smoke a lot more different sizes 
Yeah. And a lot of times it's not always the size that you like. You know, a lot of people are like, well, I like to smoke Corona or Lanceros. Yeah, I like those too. But I tell you what, recently in the past several months, I've smoked some 58 and 60 ring size cigars that are just awesome. And I've, I've smoked, smoked some Lanceros that missed. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that's a critical component to our review cycle and to you as a consumer of cigars listening and watching the show. You got to try the different sizes. You can't have tunnel vision. Yeah, I was surprised that this OP number seven wasn't. Re- I didn't find anyone who reviewed it, right? And I think because of the size, it you know the, a lot of the reviews won't go to a fifty-eight ring gauge. And I'm, I'll put you know I can put myself in that category, so I'm not. But I just knowing Dion, he he wasn't going to release a fifty-eight because he wanted to have a big ring gauge in the market. He was releasing this cigar because he felt there was something good with this blend, and and. I absolutely agree with this. If you smoke the ultras, definitely give this one a shot. Mm. Cool. Uh, where were we? Oh, we're back to me. Um, El Way Wednesday from our good buddy Nick, Nick Malillo from Foundation Cigar Companies, his new company. And Nick was on the show. Mm-hmm. You've seen him all over social media at cigar shops across the country um, with his decorated. People from the Nicaraguan dance that he talked about when he was on the show. Um, he's, he is, looks like a very uh, uh, challenging word to pronounce. A lot of people call it the wise man cigar from the guy that blended Liga Pravada. I, I don't like to make that connection when I'm talking about Nick's cigar, and I encourage everyone to evaluate uh, this cigar for what it is. Pretend it doesn't have a band, pretend it doesn't have a person behind it, and smoke the cigar. And that's really what I tried to do when I smoked these cigars. Well, I have to put aside that Nick is a friend of ours, and I like Nick very much. I think he's a really nice guy. You got to put that aside, and you have to review the cigar. Yep. And his cigars are good. I smoked the Toro, Toro Waco. Is that how you say that? I think so. Toro Waco. Toro Waco. Yep. Waco. Yep. Yep. It's an H-U-A-C-O. Waco. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's a it's a really cool size cigar. It's a big, pretty big ring. It's fifty six. I want to say it's six by fifty six. Uh, it looks actually fatter than that. Um, but this is a well balanced cigar. Spice and some nice flavors really kind of meld together. I think these are going to get a little better with age. All around a great stick. And the thing that I really liked about him was a very versatile stick. And uh, for that, I rated this one a box split. I think. Um, and I'm going to go back and smoke more. The Churchill was probably better than this one, but I'm going to smoke some of the different sizes and see which one I like. The blend is definitely good enough where I'm not going to mind smoking those other sizes, Um, but this size for me was definitely a box split. I think that Nick did a great job with this blend. Again, its resounding qualities are they're well-balanced and a very versatile both flavor profile and strength profile that he put into this cigar, and that's a lot of times difficult to achieve. No, that's a good point. I know that Churchill's getting a lot of people like that Churchill. I know you guys smoked it that yeah, night. Yeah, that's the size that I think is so far it's the bell of the ball. But I think I've only smoked the Churchill and the Toro so far. I don't think I've smoked the other sizes yet. I think I have them in my humidor. They got them next door at the Havana Cigar Club. Nice, nice. I'm actually hoping Todd will bring some over to do a, a Stoey Geek short. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. He there brings. we go. There we go. I left it to him to figure out what he wants to bring for the next one we're going to record, so... That's a good idea. Yeah, so definitely go find the the Way Wednesday. I haven't smoked it yet. I'll have to send you. I, I, owe, you, I owe you a I know. <laughs> <It's really laughs> That's been, a hint. <laughs> I know. I know. I got to send you some stuff. Yeah. All right. What else you got, Will? Um, hey, I smoked a, um, a new release by Drew Estate. Um, and this one is a line extension to the Norteño line. It's the Edition Limitada Churchill. Um, so what they did is it's the, it's the, um, Norteño blend with, uh, featuring a San Andreas Mexican wrapper, a Honduran binder, Nicaraguan filler. Um, they put it into a seven by 48, uh, Churchill, uh, box press Churchill. The whole line is box press. Um, and they kind of, from what I understand, again, this is, and this is the way Drew Estate and most, a lot of companies doing, they blend to the size. So there were some changes that were made to the blend adjustment wise, even though the tobacco profile is the same. I love the fact that they didn't, you know, I know they did a Herrera S3 Lancero last year, but it seems like all these limited line extensions go Lancero or Torpedo. Mm -hmm. I love that they picked the Churchill with this. I think it's something we don't see enough of Churchill's lately. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I thought it was actually a really good. I actually thought this was an excellent cigar. Um, it was a little more dialed back than the. I always thought the Notanio was was a little more full bodied and it was a little heavier on the palate. This was a little more dialed back. It was more of a medium strength, medium bodied cigar in my book. Um, it wasn't the most complex cigar, so it's not going to go undergo a ton of flavor transitions. But you know, you're going to get that classic San Andreas Maduro taste to that cigar. Um, and, you know, even if I would say even if Norteño wasn't your cigar for the reasons and I like Norteño, but I do like what they did with this one better. Um, and I had this as a box split. They come in boxes of 15. It's a $14 cigar. But I was real impressed with this with this cigar nice. by Drew State. It, it's a it's a nice it's a it's a nice cigar. Really nice cigar. Excellent! I can't wait to try that one. Yeah, I, I would give it. I would give it a shot, you know, guess, and see what you think of that. Because again, maybe I just found my size with this one, and the tweaks they did uh, to it made, made with that Churchill may have made a difference. The other thing I'll say about that Churchill didn't run out of steam. Mm. So sometimes with a Churchill, you get about to the two thirds of the way down, and the flavors kind of get muted. I didn't have this problem at all with that. It was mm. a really good cigar. Do we have a contest for this show, Will? We could do it. Well, we have we have more cigars, do we? Uh, no, I'm done. I got one more. Oh, go for it. Um, then we should do a contest. Okay. So how did I beat? I have more cigars than you this week. I, you know, I did five. Okay, I, I got did one five. more. Maybe I went oh. through them quicker than normal, or I didn't think so. Yeah, I don't know if you might have skipped one. No, I. Uh, right, I'll check while you do that. Yeah, you did skip one. You did. You definitely skipped one. I want to talk oh, about. Oh yeah, I did. Uh, the one I'm excited about too. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. You want? Okay. Um. So. I smoked. The Debonair 33rd Maduro. And oh, this, this is the A size. This is the A size. Yes. Um, I, I hands on a couple of these. And you know, this, you know, everyone knows Phil, Phil Zangi. He's a friend of the show. He's a sponsor of this show. But we've not given Phil an Oasis rating yet. Believe it or not. You know, and all the cigars we reviewed, and there's great cigars in there. This is, uh, we haven't given him an Oasis rating. I'm giving him an Oasis rating with wow. this. Wow. This is one of the best. And, and I'm going to just tell people. Take, you want you can take my word for it, but get this cigar if you like debonair and smoke it. Um, it is one of the best A size cigars, if not the best A size cigar I ever had. Um, it's everything debonair uh, Maduro that you like. I found that this cigar though was very very smooth for an A size cigar. That's what was really impressed with. It, it was just a smooth Maduro there. Um, it's got, you know, it, it, you're not going to get the debonair or juice so much with this cigar. You get that more in the mm -hmm. natural. Some of the Maduros, I've gotten a little bit of it. So this one, you're not going to get much of that. But you're just going to get great, great flavor on this cigar. Uh, a lot of coffee notes, uh, chocolate notes, a great earth note. I also found that this cigar was a little, um, it wasn't an over-the-top debonair. Um, sometimes the debonairs can get toward, the Maduros can get a little more on the full side. This was more on the medium to medium to full range of this cigar. Um, and it's a limited run at Phil Diddity. So I don't, you know, he, with the Solomons, he did that with the natural and they were gone. Um, with this one, I just, I was, I called Stogie Sand. I said, is this, he's like, yeah. Um, this one had, a, the ones I had, I think had about a year of age on them too. So they really, oh, really, nice. which is, those tobaccos were really married well together. And I'll say this, um, this cigar, it drew very well. So, when you get into a nine, this is a nine by 50 cigar. It's a monster. When you get a nine inch cigar, it is tough sometimes to not, you, the drawer could be tough and it's tough to get flavor sometimes from the drawer. I had no issues with this cigar. Um, by far my favorite, my favorite debonair release to date. Wow. And um, definitely check it out. That's awesome. I have yeah. some, I haven't smoked them yet. You give you, it, this is, this was a, and I get a long smoke. This was over three hours. So this was uh this was kind of one I would say and I'd say another one of these cigars don't smoke it while you're multitasking mm. yeah. um because you won't you know it's a it's a long smoke and uh, you won't get bored of this cigar is what you'll find. Uh, there... Yeah, I find that Phil does a great job uh, with blending small cigars that smoke like uh, big cigars yep. and larger cigars that smoke really well and don't make you feel like you're trying to like you know go through that cigar. So yeah, um, I mean yeah, I agree. So I smoked a great cigar as well, probably my smoke of the week. Um, and this was a box-worthy cigar from Avo. This is the Classic Covers Volume 2, which we've mentioned on the show before. 
Great body complexity of flavors, a little bolder than most of your typical Avo cigars. It's a fantastic smoke, even at $16. This is an awesome, and the box is really cool with that sliding thing we talked about before. The, it looks like a, a record. Um, it's awesome. This is a great cigar, Will. It was, it was less Avo like. Yeah. But I'm not knocking. I mean, I had this minimum. I haven't rated it yet because I smoked it kind of more informally when I smoked it. But there's no doubt it's box worthy, and it may go higher in my book. It's going to go higher than that. I tell you what, as it ages, those complexities are going to come out. Really hold your attention. Um, loved this cigar. Loved this. Cigar. Yeah, I I was. It was. It was. It. It was a very rich cigar. Now they they covered. The her- uh, they covered the heritage blend. Yeah, so they used- there's none yeah. of that. There's um, it doesn't have a grassy component, and it's got a lot more complexity than the typical heritage blend. So that's exactly yeah. what I was gonna say. Yep. Um, it was just a um, yeah, it was just I was real, and I like to. I don't know if you've had volume one. Volume one's more avo like. Mm-hmm. I'll say this one's less avo like, but it's a good good cigar. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, okay, so contests. Yes, we got a contest. What's the question, Will? Well, do we want to go do something off the from? Oh, uh, we can. I was going to say, what's your favorite cigar pairing? Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, and that's for, what are we giving away with this contest? We have a one a one sixty pack. Okay, good. I have that right here in my hand. Uh, one sixty pack is the AJ Fernandez San Latano Maduro in the robusto size. You get ten of those. This is a ten pack. Wow. Um, these are pretty well aged too. A lot of these uh, cellophane on these cigars are really brown. So these this, are Maduros. So, yeah, these are the Maduros. Yeah. Uh, so this these are well aged uh, AJ Fernandez San Latano Maduros uh, in the robusto box press size. Um, you get ten of those. Send us your favorite cigar pairing. We'll pick the, our favorite answer, and uh, you'll be the winner. Email the show at stogiegeeks.com. Awesome. Sweet. And make sure you send us a voicemail. 781-437-7833. That's 781-437-PUFF, if you prefer that as well. You can leave us a voicemail message. Congratulate us on our four-year anniversary. We'll air select listeners' voicemails on our four-year anniversary show. So you can congratulate us. You can roast us, whatever you like. 781-437-7833. I'll even throw a bonus prize in there for starters. It, uh, you will get one of the Avo uh, music the MP3 speaker humidors. Yeah, those are awesome. So, yeah, for the best one. Um, and I may throw a couple of cigars in there, too, so stay tuned on that. But, yeah, for the best one, we have a, we have a few that came in already, um, so definitely feel free to do that as well. Awesome. Well, that concludes this episode of The Stogie Geek Show. Thanks, everyone, for watching.